Masks might seem complicated, but they're incredibly powerful and probably easier to use than you think. So here are five practical ways to use masks in Final Cut Pro. In this video, I'll show you how to create each of the five masking techniques you just saw, and I'll also give you a bunch of workflow tips to make masking even easier and faster. Let's kick things off with the object mask transition. We want this car to transition in from the right, and the first thing we need to do is to isolate the car on its own layer. So I'll option click and drag the second clip to create a copy on top of itself. I'll hit the up arrow to go to the beginning of the clip and then I'll hit shift H to create a hold frame. I want this transition to last for about 8 frames so I can either trim it down or with the clip selected I'll use the shortcut Control D, type in 8 for 8 frames and hit return. I'll head over to the effects browser, search for my draw mask and add it to the clip. I'll create my mask around the car and I'll speed this part up. Generally, the more accurate the mask is, the better these effects will look, but this technique in particular is pretty forgiving and you'll see why in just a second. So you don't have to be super accurate. Now that I have the shape, I'll hit V to hide the layer below and then I'll feather out the mask to soften the edges. For this example, I'll add another draw mask just to cut out the background from the spoiler over here. On the second mask, I'll invert it and feather it slightly. Next, I'll move the hold frame over the previous clip and hit Command G to create a secondary storyline or a group, as you can see by this gray box over here. This will allow me to easily add a transition. I'll head over to the Transitions browser and search for Slide. It's a built-in Final Cut Pro transition and I'll drag it onto the beginning of the clip. I'll change the direction from right to left and what I like about this transition is that it already has some nice motion blur to it. Here is the final transition. Another fun way to use masks is to mask text behind a subject. Let's say we want some text to appear behind this runner as she starts running. I already have this title here that says go and I'll move frame by frame to see where I want the text to start appearing. And then I'll trim the start of the title to match. Now you can add a draw mask effect to the text layer, but sometimes the on-screen mask controls interfere with the text box. So I've found it's better to create a compound clip using the shortcut option G. Then I'll add a draw mask effect to the compound clip and I'll start drawing my mask around her legs. If I scrub forward, you'll see that both shoes pass by the text. So I want to make sure that my mask includes both shoes and then I can extend the mask around the side of the clip. I have to be more accurate with the mask on this example compared to the cars because we won't have the motion blur to hide the imperfections in the mask. Taking your time to get it right is worth it for a better final result. Next, invert the mask and feather it slightly. And with my playhead at the beginning of the clip, I'll add a keyframe on the control points and then move forward frame by frame, adjusting the mask as I go. This can be a little tedious, but you only have to keep going until the text has been fully revealed. I'll zoom back out and play this back. Here's another masking transition, the scene split transition. Like I've done before, I'll duplicate the clip by option clicking, then I'll create a hold frame, and this time I'll make the duration one second. I'll add the draw mask effect and mask out the sky. Luckily, you don't need to be too accurate here. Then option click on the second clip to create another copy, then invert the mask so only the foreground is masked out on this clip. I'll hide the top layer and you'll see that we just have the sky on this clip. And if I hide the other layer, we just have the foreground. Let's rename both of these clips by right clicking and renaming each one so that there's no confusion. Just like before, I'll hit Command G to create a secondary storyline or a group. I'll do that for both clips and then I'll head over to the Transitions browser again and add the slide transition to each clip. I'll change the direction to down on the sky clip and to up on the foreground clip. Just like that, we have a cool scene split transition. Did you know that 76% of you aren't subscribed? Go ahead and hit that button, come hang out. We do fun Final Cut Pro things here. Next up is the mask wipe transition. Mask wipe transitions are a lot of fun, but the key is that the subject that is being used to mask from one shot to the other needs to cover the entire frame from edge to edge. In this example, these two people on the scooter don't quite fill the frame, but I'm going to scale the shot up a little bit and reposition it so that they touch the top of the frame and the bottom of the frame the whole way through. 
I'll also cut the clip once they leave the frame. I'm going to speed this clip up by 200% so that the transition happens faster. Now I'll go frame by frame and I'll mark the frame where the second shot will start appearing. So right here as the back of his head is about to fully appear in the frame, I'll hit M. I'll lift it up from the primary storyline using the shortcut command option and the up arrow. I'll move that clip so that the marker snaps to the beginning of the second clip. I'll move my playhead to somewhere in the middle between the marker and the end of the clip to draw my mask. The reason I start in the middle is because the entire subject is in view and that way I can make sure I have enough points on the mask to keyframe it as the shape changes. Next, I can go back and forward frame by frame, adjusting the mask as I go. This is a slow process for complicated shapes, but once I've completed all the keyframes on either side of the middle, I'll play with the feathering to get the best look with all the motion blur that this clip has. This is the final result. Lastly, you can use masks to direct your viewer's focus. There are many ways to do this, so I'll quickly go through a few. Up until now, we've used the draw mask, but for this one, we're going to apply the shape mask. Instead of just applying the shape mask on its own, we are going to apply the effect we want and then use a shape mask on the effect instead. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say for this clip, I want to brighten up my face. I can add a color wheels adjustment and then click on the mask icon up here to add a shape mask. I'll adjust the mask to fit my face. I'll make it a little smaller than my face so that we have plenty of room to feather the mask. Now let's make the adjustment. Maybe we increase the highlights and the midtones a bit and I'll bring down the shadows to maintain good contrast. And that looks good. If I scrub through the clip, you can see how the adjustment stays in one place instead of following my face. So I can switch to the tracker tab and hit analyze to track the movement. Final Cut Pro tracks the mask really quickly and now that adjustment follows my face. Another thing you can do is blur a license plate, for example. I like to use the pixelate or Gaussian blur effects for this. Let's just drag the pixelate effect onto the license plate. Under the shape tab, I can adjust the mask to fit the license plate and I'll adjust the feathering to my liking. Then I'll switch to tracker and hit analyze again. And here is the final result. If you enjoyed these five practical ways to use masks, then you'll definitely enjoy these five practical ways to use Final Cut Pro's built-in object tracker.